Hi everyone, my name is Marcus and today we're going to do a bit of a deep dive into what dry fish foods are actually made of and how they're made. I'll be using the Vitalis lineup of marine foods as the example for this video because they have kindly been very open and eager to share exactly what is in their foods. They were even kind enough to provide me with this case which contains all of the individual ingredients in separate vials as well as some examples of each of the pellet and extrusion sizes in the manufacturing process. I'll be using this during the video for b-roll footage and examples. If you're not already aware, Vitalis is a very reputable brand in the fish food industry that produce their food themselves in the UK. Many public aquariums use Vitalis and you can check out the list on their website. But I was not surprised to find my local aquarium, the Sea Life Centre Melbourne, amongst them. So what's in marine fish food? Well, primarily stuff from the ocean. I know, shocker, right? The exact primary ingredients are human-grade squid, shrimp, krill, mussel and fish meal. For the fish meal, Vitalis uses whole whiting, not cuttings, and they source from under quota sustainable fisheries. When creating fish meal, a large amount of oil is naturally produced from the fish. This fish oil is extracted and removed. The reason for this is that whiting comes from a temperate ecosystem and is not native to the tropical ecosystem of the fish and coral we're typically feeding. So according to Vitalis, the nutritional profile of this oil is not ideal for tropical marine fish due to its high omega-3 content. So instead, a specifically sourced and blended fish oil is, that is higher in omega-6 is added back into the fish meal. For the herbivorous foods such as the algae flake, pellet and grazers, the primary ingredients are a blend of five different marine algae. You won't however find spirulina in Vitalis's marine range as it's not found in a natural marine environment. It is only for the freshwater side of things as spirulina is a freshwater cyanobacteria. All the products also contain vitamin and mineral supplements. These are tailored dependent on the purpose of the food, i.e. they're different for a marine between herbivore and carnivore foods, and obviously the freshwater side is different yet again. Many fish foods on the market contain wheat flour, soy and paprika oils, and food colorants. Essentially, wheat flour is used as a filler and reduces the amount of protein in the final product. For marine foods, you want to select a food that uses minimal to no wheat flour and has really high protein content, upwards of 40 to 50%. Soy and paprika oils are cheap and low quality alternatives to fish oil and not a good sign of a quality fish food. I would avoid foods that don't contain fish oil and do contain soy or paprika oils. Food colorings are common in flake foods. The stated purpose of including them from the brands that do is that it can make the food more appealing to some fish. I however find this doubtful and believe it to be primarily a psychological marketing feature added more to target the human than the fish. Vitalis does not include any soy and paprika oils nor any food colorings in any of their foods. Another ingredient you'll see in basically every fish food on the market including Vitalis is something called lecithin. It's used as a binder to basically stick all of the ingredients together. Lecithin is essentially a fat that can be found from both plant and animal sources. It is included in a huge number of human foods as well. Interestingly, when I was researching it for this video, I found that lecithin is taken as a supplement by many people for its supposed benefits to your skin and digestion. It's even used for treating memory disorders such as dementia and Alzheimer's disease amongst other things. Good to know that my fish will be less likely to suffer from Alzheimer's. The manufacturing process involves blending the raw and dry ingredients with water into big soupy pastes or slurry. The resultant product is then run through a cold extrusion process in order to create the various pellet sizes, grazer shapes and flake. According to Vitalis, cold extrusion is far superior to more traditional hot extrusion processes. A hot extrusion process for flake food involves spraying the slurry onto a series of rolling heated drums which cook the slurry, or for pellets, baking them after the extrusion process where the slurry is shot through tubes of various sizes representing the different pellet sizes. The nutritional profile of the ingredients is subsequently changed upon heating or cooking. Also, the result is a much drier and harder fish food that is rougher on fishy digestion. A cold extrusion process results in a soft, moist fish food. 
it makes sense when you think about it. I mean, I go scuba diving a lot and I've never seen a clownfish cooking its food in the wild. So there you have it. I hope you found this video interesting and perhaps you learned something that will be helpful next time you're out buying fish food. I want to make another video like this exploring frozen fish food and the supplements that go along with frozen fish food. Let me know if you're interested in that and, and how those products are made. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to subscribe to the channel, like the video and comment down below. But that's all for today. My name is Marcus and you've been watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Bye for now.